Welcome to the UNC OBGYN Quality Improvement Toolbox Lecture Series, Lecture Number 3. Today we're going to talk about fishbone diagrams. A fishbone diagram is a tool that helps you answer the question, what changes can we make that will result in an improvement? They are simply a structured way of brainstorming about a problem's potential causes. They're also known as cause and effect diagrams. Some things to keep in mind as we use fishbone diagrams to brainstorm. When you're brainstorming, don't worry about filtering your ideas. The more ideas, the better. Even if you propose an idea that you think isn't very good, it may inspire new or better ideas in yourself or someone else. So just spit them all out. Also, avoid the temptation as you think of potential causes for your problems to think about how to solve them right then and there. That will get you sidetracked. At this point, just think of as many different possible causes of your problem as possible and brainstorm them as quickly as possible. We'll think about how to solve them later. And finally, look at the process map you made while you're brainstorming. Its purpose is to help you figure out some of the non-obvious or lesser known steps in your process which might be contributing to your problem. Here's an example of a basic fishbone diagram. It's called a fishbone because it looks kind of like a fish. It has a head, a main backbone, some side bones, and then some smaller bones. The head of the fish is the summary of your problem. In this case, we're looking at a fishbone diagram for possible causes for long turnaround times for lab test results. The titles at the end of the main fish bones are the broad categories of potential causes for a problem. And then the smaller bones represent more specific causes and as you get into smaller and smaller bones, you're digging down deeper and deeper down to the root causes of each of those potential problems. Let's look at another example and build the fishbone diagram together. Let's say we want to address the problem of long wait times in a clinic. First, we start by stating our problem in the head of the fishbone diagram. So here we've stated it as waiting time. Next, we add the main bones or broad categories of potential causes of our problem. And these four that you see here are pretty common categories of potential causes of our problems. Finally, for each of those broad categories, we brainstorm specific potential causes for our problem. And then for each of those causes that we think of, we dig down deeper and deeper by asking why. Why might this be a problem? Why might this be a problem? Further and further down. It's helpful when brainstorming to try to brainstorm about one broad category at a time and to really try to flesh out all the potential contributors in that category that you can. You can use any main categories that you want, but these five are generally sufficient to cover just about any potential cause you can think of in a clinical process. Environment, equipment, methods, materials, and people. So let's look at an example together. This first one is from the MICU Ventilator Associated Pneumonia Project that we've talked about in several of our previous lectures. This is the fishbone diagram they created. They started by stating their main problem, that a ventilator associated pneumonia occurs. They then used main categories, and in this case they used people, policies, supplies, and processes. They then dug down into, for instance, the people category to think of what specific causes might be contributing. For instance, they decided that many of the staff might not even believe it's possible to have zero ventilator-associated pneumonias. But then they continue to ask why. Why might this be? And for instance, when talking to some of their staff, they realized that many staff believe that ventilator-associated pneumonias are just an expected complication of their patient population, or that their patients are just too sick to ever be able to completely eliminate ventilator-associated pneumonias. Now, notice, again, they're not thinking about how to solve these problems right now. They're just brainstorming potential causes to their overall problem. As a second example, and one that's maybe more clinically relevant to you as an OBGYN, I wanted to show you a preliminary fishbone diagram that we recently created for a project to try to increase the number of vaginal hysterectomies at UNC. Now, a caveat from the very beginning, we've only had one brainstorming session, and this is still a very preliminary fishbone diagram, much of which hasn't been fleshed out yet. Here's the overview of our fishbone diagram. 
We started by stating our main problem, or a lower than ideal TVH rate at UNC, in the head of our fishbone. You can see I then used the five generally accepted categories that we talked about for our main categories of potential causes. Environment, equipment, methods, materials, and people. And then, for instance, in the people category, we came up with a couple of high-level uh, subcategories, patients, residents, and attendings. In other words, these are subcategories which we may be able to find deeper and deeper, deeper causes that contribute to our overall problem. So for instance, between the attendings, residents, and patients that might be contributing to lower than ideal TVH rates, when we brainstormed specifically about patients, we thought that since UNC is a tertiary care center, it's very possible that the patients that get referred to us are more likely to have had multiple previous surgeries, which might make them poor candidates for vaginal hysterectomies, and therefore that might decrease our overall number of TVHs. As you can see, we fleshed out several more aspects of what contributions our patient population might be making. And again, the point is not whether these are good ideas or bad ideas, but it's just that we threw as many ideas out as possible. And then when an idea came out, we kept asking why, why, why about it and wrote down all of those ideas. Later, we can come back and organize them and figure out which ones of them are really contributing most to our problem and which ones we should attack. So in review, fishbone diagrams are a very simple tool for helping you brainstorm in an organized manner about the potential causes for your problem. Make sure when you're brainstorming to record all of your ideas, not just the ones you think are good ones. You never know which ones will turn out to be the greatest contributors to your problem. And for every potential cause you identify, keep asking why at least three to four times to help ensure that you dig down as far as you can and get as close as you can to the root cause of your problem. So what now? Get together with your class and brainstorm about the root causes of your problem and make your fishbone diagram. When you build a fishbone diagram, I've got some resources on the next slide for you that can help you do it and not have to draw it out by hand. And again, make sure to dig down at least three or four levels into each one of those small bones. Keep asking yourself why so that you can get to your root causes. You can certainly draw your fishbone diagram by hand, but there's a free tool called XMind, which is a program available for Windows and Mac. It's free, and it makes drawing a fishbone diagram really fast. It also makes it really easy to modify as you think of new reasons or decide that perhaps one cause that you thought of should belong in a different category than where you originally put it. I'll include the download links at the end of the Google survey for this lecture. I'll also include a template that you can download for XMind, which already includes the main bones and is pre-formatted so that you can jump straight into identifying your main problem and then listing your potential causes and digging down into those causes. Thanks for your attention, and as always, if you have any questions or problems, I'm always here to help.